Hi everybody, welcome to Bayou Bengals Insider. I'm Jimmy Frederick. This is an exclusive look at the 2011 recruiting class for LSU. You know, what's it gonna take? What talent are we gonna be having for next year as the Tigers continue on this great run that they've had under the tutelage of Coach Les Miles? And of course with me is Bayou Bengals Insider.com publisher, host, Mr. Everything for recruiting, recruiting guru, Derek Panamski and Derek. Man, you guys do so much. You're affiliated with ESPN, Guaranteed Broadcasting. We hear you all over the place. Well, it's, it's a kind of a labor of love. We want to make sure that we uh, cover all the stories from the LSU perspective on the recruiting front. And uh, obviously, this is, a, this is our time of the year. Well, and you know, the best thing about this is that we've get, been given a lot of great access from Coach Les Miles. We'll be talking with recruiting coordinator Frank Wilson. We'll talk with Brick Haley. Just so many people have been so gracious in allowing us to do this show, and, and that says a lot about you and your great staff at Bayou Bengals Insider. Well, it's important for us to make sure we cover the entire process. It's not just about who's a good football player. Uh, there are character things that, that are weighed in. There are, you know, obviously team needs and how the roster is. So it's, a, it's an elaborate process that's involved, and uh, we, we're going to do a great job with it. Well, no question about that. And, of course, this show is going to be breaking down exactly what LSU is going to be expecting up until signing day when they actually sign the recruits. We'll talk about the offensive line, who's coming in right after this. You're watching Bayou Bengals Insider exclusively on Cox 4. We'll be back. Welcome back to Bayou Bengals Insider. I'm Jimmy Frederick, along with me, Derek Panamski. We start off with the offensive line. There are four big-time recruits that LSU is going to be getting from, uh, for the offensive line. And, of course, you know, this is a position that, as you know, we're losing only one senior in Joseph Barksdale this year. But over the course of time, there's always some attrition at that position. Yeah, in the last couple of years, LSU's lost Davian Lowe. They've had Ernest McCoy and Jarvis Jones transfer out. So you've always kind of stayed at a steady number. But you're looking right now with the talent in state to bring in four guys to bring the offensive line numbers back up. And, and these are not just four bodies that they're bringing right. in. These are four really good football players. Well, the question that I have is, is you know, what is Coach Greg Studerauer looking for, the offensive line coach for LSU? Is he looking for bodies? Is he looking for athletes? What's he looking for when he recruits these guys? Well, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a three-part process. First of all, you want a big guy. You mm -hmm. want somebody who's physical. But it's not just where you go to the Walmart parking lot and find a big person. <laughs> you want to make sure that they're fairly athletic and somebody who can move around. This is the SEC. Speed rushers are going to constantly be coming at you. You want to make sure you have a guy with good footwork. And then the other thing is you want a guy who plays with a little bit of an edge. You want a guy who's got a temperament that can finish his blocks and make sure that they take it to the defensive lineman. All right, let's start things off with Corey White. 6'4", 310 pounds from right here in Baton Rouge from Capitol High School. Not the leanest 310 you've seen. No, he's, he's a guy that, that, that when he gets in under the tutelage of Tommy Moffitt, you could really see some restructuring of his body. Uh, a guy that's got a little bit of a, of a weight issue, but he's a guy that has phenomenal feet. You could tell he grew up playing basketball, understands the, uh, the athletic ability that he has and uses it as, a, as an offensive lineman. I think LSU's going to slot him in at guard, but he's also a guy that with, with his footwork, it wouldn't surprise me if he played tackle in the SEC. All right, the next two guys, to me, a little bit unusual. They both come from St. Augustine in New Orleans and it's, uh, it's Trey Turner and Jonah Austin. Trey is 6'3", 347. Jonah, 6'6", 330. 
to me a little unusual that you have two big offensive linemen coming from the same school in the same year. And can you imagine being six foot three, three hundred and forty seven pounds? No, and sir, being, I cannot. And, and, That's impossible. <laughs> and being the small guy. <laughs> you know, when you look at everything that Jonah Austin and Trey Turner bring to the table, there are guys that are both very athletic. Mm -hmm. uh, Turner had a shoulder inju injury during the season, missed some time, recently had shoulder surgery. That may be something while, while he's recuperating, it might be a benefit to him because he, 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 it looks like he's going to head towards a redshirt year. LSU's going to play him at guard. As physical as he is, as good as, as well as he moves, he's a guy that looks like a guard. Uh, on the, with, with Jonah Austin at tackle, I think Jonah Austin's a guy that he's a good knee bender. He's a guy that can, put, that, that can use his long arms, get a punch. Got an interesting story. When he was a child, he lost two fingers. Uh, in, a, in an escalator incident. So because he has the, the, the problem with his, with his hands, uh, with his fingers, excuse me, you can see he focuses a little bit more on hand placement, and it's a strength of his. I think Jonah Austin and Trey Turner are both really good guys, prospects down the line that can play a lot from the SEC. All right, how much is, is the sh shoulder, shoulder surgery going to, to hurt him? I mean, is it something that, that the offensive coaching staff said, you know, maybe we need to back up a little? No, not at all. It, this is a... Um, it's a precautionary thing in a lot of ways, but in the other thing is that it was a small problem, and rather than it degenerate into a bigger problem, mm. they went ahead and took care of it. All right, the, the final guy in this four-man gr grouping is L. Collins. He is from Redemptorist High School here in Baton Rouge, 6'5", a lean 317, probably the leanest 300-pounder that I can remember seeing, and, and a guy that is just absolutely a well-spoken young man, but a heck of a football player. But when, that, when the ball's down, and it gets snapped. That's he's right. got an edge. Yeah. And that's the thing you're looking for. Lyle Collins has the potential to be one of those once-in-a-lifetime guys who walks in on day one, starts at left tackle in the SEC, and dominates. Excellent footwork, phenomenal hand placement. Uh, he's got a couple of things he's got to work on, as do all guys coming into the college level. But he's going to walk in and play at a really high level on day one. Could he be what Glenn Dorsey was, the defensive line for the offensive line? Absolutely. The bigger issue with Lyle Collins is that he, along with some of the other guys in the class like Anthony Johnson, are phenomenal leaders. These guys follow them, follow them. And when they go to the All-American games, when they go to the combines and camps all across the nation, people look at a guy like Lyle Collins and they say, I want to play with him. That guy's a winner. And, and quite frankly, he is a, a, a true left tackle. I mean, he's a left-handed guy. He's a true left tackle. He's really going to be something Left-handed guy, pure left tackle, a phenomenal prospect. And we have a great interview with him coming up. We learn a little bit more about him as a person right after this quick break. You are watching Bayou Bengals Insider. We'll be back right after this exclusively on Cox 4. Welcome back to Bayou Bengals Insider. And every week uh, we're going to do a player feature to try to get a glimpse of the guys that are going to be signing with LSU off the field. And for our first uh, installment this week, Jimmy Frederick had an opportunity to sit down with Redemptorist High School All-American left tackle, Lyle Collins. Sitting down with Lyle Collins, who is an offensive tackle, or was an offensive tackle this year, graduating in 2011 from Redemptorist. Lyle? Thank you so much for being here, man. We really appreciate your time. And, you know, this is – everybody talks to you about football, and, of course, we want to do that. But this is our opportunity, as Derek said, as he threw to this a, a little bit earlier, is that, you know, this is an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better, and that's mm -hmm. what we're excited about. Uh, first of all, got to ask you a little bit about this past season at Redemptorist. You guys had a great run. You know, we had a, we had a pretty good run. Um, I mean – Everything started from this summer, working out real strong. I mean, we was a real good class there. I mean, we started our freshman year. We went undefeated my freshman year and uh, had a real good sophomore year, junior year. My senior year was good. Everybody seemed, you know, the bond was there. Right. The chemistry was there. Um, we just came up a little short in playoffs against Patterson. Um, we was expected to, you know, go all the way, but, you know, everybody comes up a little short. But it was a good year, though. 
Absolutely. And all right, I got to know, when did you realize that, hey, you know, this, is, this, this football thing is what I want to do? This is, this is where my, my passion lies. Well, I, I've been playing football since, like, third grade in, in, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I just never thought, you know, that I'd have the opportunity to be able to go play college ball. You know, you always look at TV, you always dream about being in that position. But when you put in that position, you're like, wow, you know, this, this is for me. So about um, September 11th of my junior year, uh, sophomore year, whichever it was, um, I, I received a whole bunch of scholarship offers <laughs> from all over. And I was like, wow, you know, my first scholarship offer was from Tennessee. Um, I was really excited about it. I was like, mom, you know, I never thought, you know, I could right. be in this position. Right. And I was like, well, um, that's the first school to offer me. I think that's where I want to go. <laughs> I but, was wondering if you uh, were going to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm going. Yeah, so I was like, man, um, it was like, well, I received a scholarship offer from LSU and from every other school. So I was like, well, I'm looking at all these other schools. Uh, I feel like I want to go to LSU because I, I went to some of their games before they offered me and I was just like, man, I really love this atmosphere. I really love, you know, the way that, that the chemistry is out there and at one big family. I like that about LSU. I was like, man, you know, that's where I want to go. So that's where I want to be. And it just all came serious to me. Like probably my junior year, I was just like, man, I'm going to make this happen. You know, I'm going to play the next level and I'm going to work hard and, and mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to get what God has for me. Well, I know that everybody in, in Baton Rouge and Louisiana are glad you're staying here. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but you're an Eagle Scout. Yeah. And not very many people can say that. Uh, I got to ask you about uh, some of the things that, that maybe you learned in scouting. Uh, I know you had a good time at Avondale, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, some things that I learned about in scouting is just the first thing, you know, is being committed at what you want to mm -hmm. do in life, you know, just staying faithful to it. You know, being commi totally committed to whatever you, whatever you start, you know, just finishing it, you know, and finishing it on a good note. So it's like in, in scouting, they teach you a lot of different things growing up, you know, just to teach you how to be a young man, you know, how to be polite, how to be cursed, how to be kind, how to be nice, you know, just to show people and like, you know, in your community, you know, this is life and every everything that's not that's not good you don't have to go around and mope right. about it you know they teach you how to do all types of things and like teach you how to like fish and just be a kid and, and have fun with it and, and I know you know being an Eagle Scout and that taught you a lot of leadership too and you lead the guys in your troop a, yeah. a lot you know yeah. especially when you're in that position and and I imagine that translated a lot in, into football well it, it all carries over you know being taught that at a young age and is you've been in that for so long, you know, it's just a nature of your life. So when, when football comes along, you know, and everybody's like kind of like immature a little bit, you know, you have to just show those guys, well, man, this is, this is our goal. This is what we want to mm -hmm. do. So in order to be successful in what we want to do, we have to be committed to what we're doing right now. Like in the weight room, you know, don't, don't take a, a rep off. Don't, right. don't take a, a hundred off or 110 off. <laughs> don't, don't do it because in the end it's going to show I mean, be in the best shape of your life. So when the season comes, you're 100%, you're ready to go, and you're just blowing kids out of the water. So it all, and when, when there's somebody there to lead that team and somebody leave that program, then those guys are going to look up to you and like, man, you know, well, this guy's being successful. And why he's being successful is because he's committed to what he's yeah. doing and he loves what he's doing and, you know, just, just going hard at what he's doing. So a lot of guys are going to look at that and they're going to take it and they're going to roll with it. Man, what a great asset it's going to be to have this guy on the LSU football team. Uh, talk a little bit about the fact that, uh, you know, you committed pretty early, yeah. you committed as a junior, that you've been an instrumental part and a big-time leader in bringing this class together. And uh, I know the coaching staff at LSU are very excited about the fact that you've taken a big leadership role. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, everybody considers me as a leader, you know. It's, 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 it's a real big it's a real big opportunity for me to be a leader in this class and it's because you know these guys that these guys are not just coming to LSU they want to be at LSU mm -hmm. they want to win and I mean these are great guys they they great they have great personalities you know they they want to be on that on that on a good under a good program you know be successful and, and they trust LSU to the fullest just as well as I do and then I mean I was like one of the first guys to commit so like as soon as I committed like I mean, the, the, a couple of days later, got more guys committing. I mean, we're all just coming on one accord, and mm -hmm. we're just 
you're just looking to get the best guys out there. And we had a lot of good talent in the state. So, I mean, we want to keep everybody here. And we just, we just, and we decided to come up, you know, with a name for ourselves. We call ourselves the fam. Really? And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's very special because, I mean, we're all here. We're all in state and we're all good guys and right. we all know each other. We know our personalities and everything. So it's like we're not only being recruited, we're not only recruits, we're, we're family. So Wow, that says a lot. You know, we don't realize it as, as people that are not in the program, uh, sometimes we think about when you show up in August, it's just the first time you're meeting a lot of these guys. But that's not the case. Yeah. You know these guys. As yeah. you said, you're family already. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we already know each other like yeah. this. We talk to each other all the time. So we're family already. All right, now, everybody sees your shirt, All-America Football. The football game's coming up. In fact, when this show airs, well, you're going to be playing that game. Yeah. Uh, how special is that for you to be going to Orlando? Uh, Man, it's special. Um, it's, it's a very good, wonderful opportunity to be able to play an Under Armour game. Um, I know a lot of guys that's going down with me. Last, last year, I went to the Combine. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed everything about the Combine. And just and they invited you to the game, let you come to the game free and everything like that. And just being around that that type of atmosphere, you know, being around all American players, the top notch players and being able to prove yourself and show people why, you know, you're in this position mm -hmm. and why you had this opportunity, you know, it's a great feeling and it's a wonderful feeling to be able to, you know, just take a whole week and just enjoy yourself in Orlando. Everything's taken care of. You you have no worry right. in your life. I mean, and it's and it's a great feeling. Well, you know, I haven't even congratulated you on being a USA All-American. Congratulations on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you've just, it, it's been a real pleasure to watch you play football. And we've appreciated the fact that you've yeah. been on the Cox 4 Game of the Week a few oh, times. Yeah. From, totally from Redemption's High School and from the coaching staff and all the players, we want to totally thank y'all for everything that y'all did for us, you know, giving us the opportunity to play on y'all on Cox Communications. And we really appreciate that. And that's that meant a lot to us. Well. We always wanted to bring the best football and the best guys, and that's what I think we did, especially with you and your Redemptorist Wolves. Well, man, thank you so much for being a part of this show. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday afternoons and Saturday <laughs> nights in Tiger Stadium, yeah, and yeah. we wish you all the best, and, uh, and good luck in the football game coming up this week. All right, thank you. Well, Collins, everybody, a recruit going to LSU, of course, offensive tackle for the Redemptorist Wolves for four years, and now he's heading to the Under Armour All-America game, and we certainly wish him all the best. We're going to head now to a quick break. We'll come back with more of Bayou Bengals Insider right after this. We're back with more of Bayou Bengals Insider. And just as we mentioned earlier in the show, Coach Les Miles gave us great access to his coaching staff. Of course, the number one person we wanted to talk to is Coach Frank Wilson. He's a recruiting coordinator, and Derek had a chance to sit down with him earlier this week. Coach Frank Wilson's been uh, generous enough to give us a few minutes of his time. First of all, Coach, you know, obviously welcome home. This is your first full season at LSU back in Louisiana. How's it been for you? coming back to the home state, going out, seeing these high school coaches that you've, you've known for years as a guy representing LSU. It's been wonderful. Uh, this time of the year during the holiday season is uh, even more rewarding. Uh, look at the past six years, been away, you know, been away to different parts of uh, the South, uh, coaching college football, and didn't have that opportunity to enjoy the holiday season with my siblings, with my mother, and with my family, and my in-laws. Uh, so to be able to do that after six years was certainly gratifying and uh, very much enjoyed being back home and being part of the LSU Tigers. Now, your recruiting areas, you know, you're kind of a jack of all trades. They'll send you wherever they need you to kind of work on a guy, but the majority of the work that you do is in New Orleans and you know, through other areas, Thibodeau, some of the places that you have really close ties. How has it been for you going in there and seeing those high school coaches that you've known for years? Uh, it's been great. You know, um, the entire state of Louisiana is, uh, I claim, 
as my recruiting area. And when I've been at other places, I've uh, actually recruited the entire state of Louisiana. Uh, most recently uh, here at LSU, uh, I've done mostly South Louisiana, but uh, occasionally we'll pop around for North Louisiana, Central Louisiana, uh, wherever I need to be. And uh, but it's good, man. It's 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 awesome to see those guys. I got friends up in Shreveport and Monroe. Um, you know, Wachita, back down to New Orleans, certainly is uh, where I was born and raised. And I went to school in Thibodeau to go in that area. And then to come in the Baton Rouge area and recruit here, um, it's certainly uh, been awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm awfully excited about now, it. Now, with all the connections that you have across the state, you know, certainly coming with some of your other, spo other stops, people that you've met across the nation, as the recruiting coordinator, how hard is it for you to go through the evaluation of literally thousands of high school players and kind of paring all that down to to what you deem to be what LSU wants to offer somebody. How hard and how exhausting is that process? Oh, it's very uh, exhausting. You know, it's, it's we call it um, a process saying that the evaluation process continues because it never stops. Uh, you may see a young man as a junior who is uh, who's a no-brainer and you kind of know I want that guy. But you may have this other young man who uh, is a late bloomer and going into his senior year, uh, somewhere mid-season, hit stride. And, uh, and certainly you don't want to sleep on him, so you keep that window of opportunity there. Uh, so we continue to recruit uh, all the way throughout their senior year. Um, the, the greatest advantage uh, for me is relationship uh, with these high school coaches and uh, the parents and guys I went to school with or coached against or coached for or coached me. Uh, the flip side of that is uh, every one of them have a great player. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so I have to be tedious and have to be thorough to give those uh, guys who I respect tremendously uh, their kids a, a, a true and fair evaluation. That brings me to what I think is probably one of the most important questions here. How hard is it for you to tell these guys we don't have room? Yeah. Uh, it's difficult because uh, this is the flagship state uh, university, so you want to grant that opportunity to all those young men who are out there, uh, student athletes who, who love LSU, who love the purple and gold, and you want to be able to give uh, every one of them a scholarship. Unfortunately, uh, there's restraints with the, uh, with the NCAA that only allows us uh, to sign 25 of them. And, um, and year in and year out, we have to gauge um, that number based on attrition and the things that we need to do. So um, it's a position need. Uh, base situation and you know with coach miles leadership we kind of identify our most needed positions and uh, and we go after those guys and uh, but the thing we'll never do is turn away a great player um, so you know unfortunately um, you know sometimes we have to say no uh, but the coaches here are wonderful and they understand and they understand what we're trying to do and that's uh, continue to have this place as a national powerhouse does that make it more uh of a pride issue when a guy from state, from in state, does get that offer. When he do, when 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 you finally do come across with that, do you find out that that those guys in state they they realize what it means to get that offer? Yeah, uh, because we don't give many out. You know, um, the place where you lay your head, your backyard. You don't just go out tossing out scholarship offers to every Billy and Joe. Uh, but uh, it is an indeed an honor to get a scholarship offer from LSU. It's an honor for us to be able to recruit the, st the student athletes in the state of Louisiana. So it goes hand in hand. Uh, we, we take care of home first. Before we go anywhere else, anywhere else uh, we identify and look at the kids in the state of Louisiana first. Uh, and they get first preference um, because we want to do a very good job in our state. And then uh, from that point on, we expand throughout the South and the places that have been good to us. Well, Coach, thanks a lot for taking some time. We greatly appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back with more Bayou Bengals Insider right after this.
Welcome back to Bayou Bengals Insider. What a great interview it was of Frank Wilson. Just a, just a tremendous gentleman to work with. You could tell why he's so good in the, in the, in, in the home, uh, sitting there on the couch with him, talking with yep. him. Uh, he, he had me sold. Absolutely. Now, it's time to talk a little bit about linebackers. And I say linebackers. There's only one linebacker being recruited, Derek. And you know, a lot of people are saying, why is that? Well, the, uh, when you look at the big picture, what LSU does recruiting-wise, they recruit to the depth chart. And when you see that you're only losing one linebacker and senior Kelvin Shepard, then the opportunity for four linebackers to get in on this class doesn't really present itself. The 85 hard limit of scholarships really kind of uh, zones you in on exactly the amount of guys you want to you bring in. And what LSU has done is they pretty much take the attrition that they have, be it by graduation or you know, guys just leaving, and then kind of fill in with that. Last year you had Jacob Kuchera, yep. Harry Coleman, Perry Riley leave. You signed Justin Macklin, DJ Welter, and Luke Muncy. This year with Kelvin Shepard leaving, you got the one guy that you're bringing in, in uh, Trevon Randall. All right, let's talk about Trevon Randall. He's out of League City, Texas, 6'1", 205, tremendous athlete, made some big tackles over the course of the last few seasons. The highest compliment that you can pay to a linebacker is that they tackle people. Uh, he's not just a guy who looks good getting off the bus. He's not just a guy who runs all over the place. He tackles people. That's the most important thing that you're looking for. And John Chavis has a, has a, a guy in Trevon Randall that's a, 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 just an absolute high-energy guy all over the field, can play, maybe can grow a little bit into the middle, but mm -hmm. probably uh, projects more towards a uh, strong side outside linebacker, possibly weak side, if he gets his coverage skills down a little bit better. And, and you mentioned Chavis looking for a, a type of, of person, a type of athlete, and he's got a pretty good size range that he's really going for. Yeah, he, John Chavis is, is he likes guys that can run, and mm -hmm. that's why you know another guy who's committed in this class, Alonzo Lewis from St. James, Six foot four, 195 pounds. I could see Alonzo Lewis growing into linebacker in the system LSU has. All right, Derek, real quickly, really wanted to, uh, to ask you one last thing, and that is something that uh, basically people forget that this is a long-term process. This isn't a one-year, one-season thing you're doing. Well, when, in the recruiting process and what Frank Wilson talked about earlier, you have a situation where you're evaluating these guys for an awfully long time. Right. When they finally get that offer, you want to be absolutely sure they can play at LSU. All right, Derek, this is our, our first show. We've got a lot more to come over the next few weeks. And, of course, we'll be breaking down every position. This week, we looked at offensive line and linebacker. Next week, we've got another great show for you. And uh, it's always going to be interesting to see who LSU brings in on Bayou Bengals Insider. We'll have a lot more. I'm Jimmy Frederick, Derek Panamski. We'll see you next week on Bayou Bengals Insider. See you, see you next week.